Okay, so that was so perfect. So perfect transition right here for um, forming an embouchure for the very first time for a student or for someone that's been playing for a while that's getting a lot of uh, fuzzy buzzing and right. a lot of static. How do, how do they begin to form your embouchure in the beginning and then how do they keep it tight so they have a good flute sound? With my uh, little students and all the way up to even adults that come to me, uh, as, um, even seniors in high school who have been like top in their section or top in the all-state band, um, I always start with spitting rice. Mm. And I, I don't know if I actually have rice with me. Hold on one second. Okay, great. So you got some rice. Okay. Some rice, right? <laughs> no. um, and so it's dry rice that you would, you know, cook with, but it's not uncooked. And um, it's very important to get a good seal, proper seal around the, the uh, your lips. So if you go to do this and you go, it's going to be an airy sound because your lips are just not, um, I hate to use the word tight, but they're not in the proper position, I guess. Um, so, form a good tight seal with your lips around your uh, tongue, but you don't want to smile or do anything like that. Mm. And then it okay. just makes like a kind of sound. Right. Awesome. We do one more and I'll pick all this rice up. <laughs> or we'll cook it. I don't know if you don't get anything. <laughs> so, one more time. Cool. Which one's going there? It doesn't really matter. You've got to have the good and so when your tongue pulls back out of the way, the air shoots out like a slingshot. Sure. But you, if you try to do it and you go or move your mouth at all, then you're not going to have the air come out for the proper sound. So. Um, Um, so that sets your mouth up for the right embouchure, mm -hmm. and it gives a good clarity to the beginning of the sound. Now, as you become more advanced as a flute player, there are different types of tonguing that would um, come into play, and that you might um, move your tongue back a little bit to get more legato to sound, or of course slur, where you don't use any tongue. However, the first note of a slur is always tongued. you get a good start to the sound sure um but then you keep your sound going and you don't actually tongue until until the next till the slur is over um anyway what about um, centering because that's another thing i notice all the time some people have different mouths so it's not one size fit off really for okay. this because some people ha have to kind of blow out the corner of their mouth and stuff like that, and that's fine but you do want good position. You don't ever want to be like this. And not really centering for uh, the actual flute. Yeah, you're talking about the mouth. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and so you don't want, if you play like this. Mm -hmm. See, right. my mouth's centered, but I'm kind of blown over the side. Right. Doesn't sound very good. So you do want... And I don't know if it will show up on video oh, or not, course. but there's oh. like a little air stream that happens. I'm not sure if it's showing up or no, not. It's totally showing. Is it? Okay, there should be a little V. We're, we're in HD. <laughs> there should be a V where the air is coming through. Sure. And so it, you can actually stop and sometimes look at your own flute and see if you've been blown in the right spot. Sure, sure. Or watch a new mirror or have a friend look yeah, at it. Yeah, a mirror is a vital um, yeah, yeah, practice very, very uh, tool. Yeah, very important because you can see whether you're doing stuff weird or not. Cool. So anyway, going back to the embouchure, I would say that yes. spitting rice kind of gets you that good ex exactly where you need it to be. Right. And the good clear tonguing right at the beginning. Now, I would say that most, uh, this is not against band directors, but most band directors don't understand the whole rice thing. They sure. may even have heard it before and tell their students it's like spitting rice, mm -hmm. but until somebody sees it and sure. sees it done the right way, it's um, it's not quite um, the same. Well, everybody's not a specialist until they become right. one, so yeah. Exactly, yeah. And um, but it, anyway, it's very important because it's completely different. Trumpet players tongue behind the teeth, uh, reed players tongue on the tip of the reed, we don't have any of that. So we have to kind of create our reed, which is the tip, uh, either right between the lips or right between the teeth. And then the further back that you go in your mouth with your tongue, it 
and that was between the lips. Here's between the teeth. You hear it's already a little bit smoother, um, not as crisp, so it just depends on what you're playing. Uh, behind the teeth is okay, but it's more of a legato, more kind of like I'm talking like this kind of uh, a mumbled sound. Okay, um, and then even further back, kind of on the top of the top of the ridge of the mouth, maybe for a real legato da 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 kind of tongue. So it just depends on what you want. A lot of times I'll have people, um, especially band directors, ask me to come in and work with their flute players. Sure. And then they're like, you know, my flute players, they sound uh, muddy and, and mushy, and how can I get them to sound crisper? Well, they're not tonguing forward. They're tonguing real far back. Right. And therefore, it's the difference in me talking real crisp and articulated. Sure. So it makes a big difference. Well, moment by moment, you show why a private teacher is needed. Yeah. <laughs>